while we haven't had much to look forward to football wise in May um, after the Mansfield game there is a game coming up this weekend that I know you know everyone oh. in Milton Keynes including yourself oh. will be keeping an eye on oh, how excited are you to see Delhi in the Champions well, League well I've got a massive day on Saturday because we've also got Marshall live here in, in the arena uh, and that's going to be a brilliant day loads of groups loads of things happening great to have Marshall here and about but I'm going to have to disappear for a couple of hours because you know to go and watch young Delhi play I mean, we saw him in a semi-final of the World Cup last year. You didn't think it could get better than that, did you? But it has. He's going to play in probably the biggest game in, in club football in the world. Probably, I know it's European uh, Champions League, but it's probably the highest game in the world that you can go and play in. And Delhi's there. Uh, Delhi will be representing Milton Keynes, uh, showing us that it's possible for anybody to have a dream and go and deliver it. If you're prepared to do the hard work and effort that's gone into it, because that's what people have got to remember with Delhi they see all the glory of it all but the hard work that he continues to put in behind the scenes to be fit enough to take those opportunities when they come that's what I'm so proud about we helped give him that character we helped to deliver that ambition with him and that's why you know I'm so proud of what he goes on to do but it's him in a special year as well given that you know off the back of a World Cup but also seeing him play here uh, in the stadium yeah. early in the season and that Tottenham team majority yeah. of whom played here yeah, are going to be in that championship really it's quite great, special isn't really it really great point Anthony we've all had the chance to see a few of those players that will be participating on Saturday because they did Delhi brought the team here didn't he uh, to, to play this season and uh, now of course they've gone into their new home and I have to say, I do think it's spectacular. I don't love many other people's stadium. I'm so proud of our own. But that's quite a lot of elements of ours I, I, I see there. And, uh, and I think Daniel's done an absolutely fantastic job for it. And I do think that that will help cement Tottenham as one of the leading clubs in the country. I mean, these are really big things to go and do. And I remind everybody that we've got our infrastructure in place. What we just need to do is get our team right now. Uh, and then one day uh, we could look to have uh, you know those sort of glory days. Um, and people might think that I'm joking. And probably under myself, I probably am. But for, for, for the team in Milton Keynes, I don't think I'm joking. Super. And that ambition is matched by what, what's been happening at the stadium you know, last week and, and coming up as well with the, with the, with the concerts. Take that. You know, performing here the other week, Roger Stewart coming up, Ramstein. How excited are you to see live music? Um, you know, performing here. You know, uh, here this summer and seeing thirty thousand people come out to watch it. Well, you know, sometimes it takes the horror of the relegation to put you back to work, to go and actually go and find all the income you can to do something that we should have been doing for the last few years, really. Um, you can see the stadium with the uh, the staircases are all built into the stadium, into the design, the seats come out. There you can get to the pitch. That was all part of the original plan. And it's brilliant to see these big artists coming to Milton Keynes because I'm somebody that says, you know, you shouldn't have to go somewhere else. If you want to watch top flight anything you should be able to do that in our home city and we have a wonderful track record with the bowl and very big music concerts so many of them though of more recent years have been in stadium sized and that's the opportunity for stadium mk to go and make its mark on those tours and i'm really pleased to say we are because these will not be the last of the concerts we're doing we're already talking to all the promoters about concerts next year as well and i do want it to be something that we can regularly do uh, we can see that it has an impact on the pitch uh, and obviously having a great playing surface is really important to any of the managers that we have here. So we'll have to see how we recover from that. We'll obviously have lots of learning. Every time you do a big event, you know, uh, not enough gates open to take that when we first opened and all things like that. You do that learning. That's why you have to do the events so that we can get really good at doing them. But I know that, uh, you know, that the, the, the band uh, absolutely loved it and, and I can't wait to see Sir Rod because I think he's going to love it too definitely um, for, for the MK Dons fans that, that, that might not be aware can you explain the, the impact and the financial benefits it can give to the football club specifically having these concerts here well, we have to run a huge deficit in the football club. Anybody that looks at the accounts every year sees there's a black hole of major millions of pounds, uh, multi-millions of pounds. Every year you have to plug that gap. And that's why we work so hard on everything else that we do. And things like the stadium concerts bring money in that helps you bridge that gap because otherwise it's unsustainable. You can't, you know, lots of people can come in and lose a few million pounds one year or maybe a few million pounds for a couple of years. You try doing it for the time we've done it for and you try doing that year in and year out it's 
major, major, major amounts of money. And you can say, well, couldn't the money be better spent somewhere else, not on the football? Well, yes and no. It's the football that emotionally drives everything else that people do. Would, would everybody work as hard as they do, going through all the ag of doing all these things, if we didn't have that purpose to support the football club? I, I think it's very, very much still at the absolute heart, and we have to do it. We've had to go to work. We lost a lot of money being relegated, and as people saw, our, our wage budgets didn't go down. Um, and the way you do that is because you work really hard at everything else that you do. Uh, but you know, it all comes back to smiles on faces, doesn't it? And you know, after a difficult last couple of years, and you know, we've done a few of these interviews now, sitting in the stands, and they've not been so joyful and, and happy. It's just nice that you know yourself, people in Milton Keynes, can have a smile on their faces, and you know, hopefully, long may that continue. Well, it's definitely relief. It's definitely relief. But I was gutted that we went down from the championship. Let alone gutted that we go to League Two. We, we, we cannot be in the lower leagues of football. And that's the pressure that stays on us. I don't know whether this year now, because we've got some momentum, will be the year that we do it. But I need to go into every season with the confidence that we're going to at least give it a damn good go. And that again means every part of the business is here, working as hard as they can to deliver the maximum income they can, which gives us the best chance. Um, you know, as, as I say, it's all about the way everything works together that is the way that you can go and find some success. And for all my worries about how that goes in the future and how we do compete, every year there is a great story, whether it's Leicester City winning the Premier League a few years ago, or whether this season it's Sheffield United getting promoted. You know, we were with Chris Wilder only a couple of years ago ourselves, and, and we've seen the impact that him and his team has been able to have on the city of Sheffield. And, and, it's, and it's great to see. And, and it, gives, it inspires me, you know, a few years ago it's Huddersfield. There's all always one every couple of years that can sneak in there but also we've got something that's very real here and now we've got a city that's forever expanding so again at the right time we might be ripe for that future investment that comes in to take us that next stage I'm very pragmatic the people that know me well know that my feet are very much on the floor I always talk about the vision I always talk about the ambition because I believe it but I also know how difficult it is to get there and the different steps you might have to take on that journey but I don't want to leave anybody in any doubt the ambition remains of this football club I'm so sorry that we ended up where we are I really hope we don't make those mistakes again but we're absolutely focused on trying to go onwards and upwards whether that's this year next year the year afterwards that pressure stays on because the only way it works in Milton Keynes is for this team to ultimately be in the top flight